Hey, what's up? Welcome to this video in which we are going to talk about how we can architect a scalable solution when it comes down to styling in React applications. So roughly you have three ways you can style your React apps. You have CSS modules, you have styled components or your motion, and you have the, you know, I would call it more like utility and component tools such as Material UI, uh, Tailwind, Bootstrap, Chakra UI, you know, there's a lot of libraries out there. Um, that either provides you with a combination of either uh, utility functions so you can style elements um, in your app or, uh, you know, where you can kind of like import, like for example, with Material UI components straight out of the box. But in this video, we will be mainly focusing on CSS modules and styled components for the simple reason that these are the most common used tools when it comes down to, you know, highly customized software. And the other tools, they, you know, they vary a lot in, 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 in often also have documentation included how to approach, for example, using, I don't know, material UI or Tailwind in a React application. But let's take a step back from the actual styling part, right? It all starts with proper design. And most of the time you as a developer are not in charge of the design, but UI UX experts are. So. A good UI UX expert, in my opinion, has a good understanding of, you know, how things are implemented in the front end, right? So how, you know, the fact that we have components in React, this is something that's really important for the UI UX designer to know. And good designs are based of a design system. And that's actually what you see right here. This is an example of a design system. So. What it has, it has, it's kind of like a style guide where, you know, as you can see right here, they have standard like shapes and they have standard colors, um, the typography. It's a really like the basic fundamental building blocks of the user interface. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, you can see even we have buttons and list items, controls for forms like check boxes and input fields and text areas and so on. This is great because it will, you know, allow for, you know, very consistent design because the designer is essentially grabbing elements from here to style things. And of course you cannot like, there's always things that are, you know, very specific to one page. And in that case, it doesn't really, you know, make sense to put it in your like design system because it's just a very unique piece of UI. And the reason I talked about a design system is that in most React applications, you want to have a combination of both local and global styles. So um, think about the design system I just showed you. For example, in the input component, since you will be using that multiple times throughout the app, you probably want to globally style that, right? And if you have very unique pieces of UI, you can locally style that because it's not needed anywhere else in the code base, at least for now. So you can just keep it local. Right here, I made essentially a decision tree. So if the UI element is not used in multiple places, then you just can keep it local, like I said before. However, if it is used in multiple places, then you might want to consider making a separate component out of it only if it makes sense. And if you would like to know more about, you know, when it makes sense to do that, you can check up the video up here. So if that's the case, you can make a separate component out of it and you can also locally style that component. Now, if it doesn't make sense for to, you know, make a separate component out of it, you probably want to globally style that piece of UI. So right here, I have an example of CSS modules and later on, I will also show you an example of styled components, but you know, this might look very familiar to you because it's well, very close to plain CSS. So if you have local styles, you just have, you know, your, your style sheet that belongs to the component you're targeting and you write a class for it with styles and then you can use it um, on a certain element. Now, if you want to have global styles right here, I, I pick text area, but it can also be like a custom class. You can essentially do the same thing, right? So here, because of the fact that it's a text area, the, the global styles will automatically be um, taken in, but you could kind of like do the same thing, right? Take a class name and apply it to a UI element. The question, however, is with local styles, it's very simple because you're going to store this in, well, a, for example, a, like a component name dot module dot 
um, CSS or SCSS file. But with global styles, a lot of people ask themselves, where should I actually store these styles, right? How can I organize this? And the very popular approach to solving this problem is the so-called 7 to 1 pattern, which essentially works like this. So you have your app.tsx or JSX component that imports a main.css or main.scss file, which then imports files from seven individual folders. So that's like the whole idea that you import files from seven folders into one CSS or SCSS file. Right here, I have a nice example of that. So here you have a folder with all those seven individual folders within their individual CSS or SCSS files. So um, let's take a look. So the first folder abstracts is where you can put in things like variables, maybe colors or even like functions and mix-ins. Then you have a base folder where you can put, for example, your CSS reset file or things related to typography, amongst others, of course. Then you have a folder that is for components. So right here, they talk about, for example, a you know, specific file for all the styles for your buttons or a drop down, you know, shared components, essentially. And then there's a folder layout where you can put things like, you know, for your header, your footer, your sidebar, just everything that is related to well, layout pages. So this is styling for individual pages, maybe like a home page or a contact page, a team folder. Maybe you have like a dark and a like a white team or, or something like that. So you can also use that um, and vendors, which is well, if you use something like Bootstrap or anything, you can can put that in here. And then at like the well, kind of kind of like the root of the folder, you have that main that SCSS file that imports all these files from all these folders. So here I got an example of my personal site, techbase.dev. And as you can see right here in the app.tsx component, I import a that main.css file or scss in this case. And then when I go there, you can see I put it in a folder called styles. And that's where I import all the individual files that are in these folders. Now you can see I only have four folders and the reason for that is that I don't need the other ones, right? So, um, well, let's take a look right here. So abstracts, here you can see we got a variables um, file, which as you can see, simply sets some colors. Um, for the base, I have my um, CSS reset, typography, components. These are the things that are shared throughout the code base. So uh, for example, like this card component, which I use multiple times, um, pages and this is kind of like where i organized the global styles but don't be mistaken by the fact that you know i store all my styles right here which you could you know you could do that you could put all your styles right here um but i personally would not recommend it i would just leave my global styles right here for the simple reason that and i can show it to you uh, for example if i go to the components folder i have right here right here for example i have a modal component right? As you can see, it has the actual uh, TSX component and it has the style component. Now, the thing is that I like the principle of co-location, which, well, essentially means that you try to keep and store, you know, files, including your, your, your CSS files, as close as possible to the place where you need it. And the only place where I need these styles are in this model, the TSX component. So, it, that makes a lot of sense for me to put it right here, but for the global styles, I think the approach I showed you right here, where you have like a styles folder with all your individual files, gives a lot of structure to your global styles. So now let's take a look at how we could do the same kind of thing with styled components. So if you have your local styles, you know, it's pretty simple. You just have your um, component and then you can use it and it will well, essentially use the styles you define it right here. Now for global styles, it's a little bit different compared to CSS modules. So I will show it to you. So styled components has a function called create global style, which you can use. So what you do um, is you create a file, for example, global styles.js or ts. And then you can, well, as you can see right here, they target the body, but you can kind of like put in right here, your CSS resets or base styles, for example, things related to, to the body. Um, and then you can use those global styles 
by simply putting them into, for example, your app.tsx component just at the very top. And that will make sure that every, you know, page in your um, or, or component in your React app essentially is able to use those styles. So right here, you can see that the body based on a prop has either a white or a black color. Well, if I would import it right here in my app component at the very top, it ensures that, you know, no matter on which page I am, the body will always be white or black based on that prop. But for all other things, so things that are, you know, not either CSS resets or base styles, like where you set default styles for the body, I recommend you to create separate files. And you can also do it like in a, well, it's a seven to one ish way where you um, still make use of like one folder where you then have individual folders like the components and, and like the base and the abstracts where you can then put in your, um, well, essentially individual files. So right here, if you, for example, want to put styles for a default button, um, you could do something like this where you then have your styles for that button and then you can simply import that button and use it in your React app. And now you might think like, you know, why not create a separate component for this piece of UI altogether? And that's possible as well, but it's kind of like a trade-off, right? Um, what I see a lot of people do is they create for like all small pieces of UI, they create a separate component for it. The problem right there is that if we would have done it with this button, for example, right now I can just use the button and say it's a type button, for example, right? It's really simple. I give pretty much the person that's going to um, use that button all control in, you know, what type it is, what the on-click event is and so on. If I would have made a separate component out of it, and especially if, you, if you've been using TypeScript, you know, you know that it costs some extra time because you have to write props now for it. And, you know, you just have to probably support a lot of use cases, which is maybe not always what you want. Sometimes you just want to use the global styles, but, you know, don't want to be burdened by having to create a separate component out of it. It doesn't always make sense. So it was a relatively short video and you know, I hope you, you, you got some tips on, on things you can take away from this because a lot of people have a difficult time wrapping their head around, you know, how am I going to organize uh, global styles? And I think this is a very, you know, a good approach, very scalable as well. And of course it's opinionated, right? Uh, this is definitely not the only way you can do it. There's a lot of other, you know, uh, alternatives to the seven to one pattern, but I think if, you know, you're looking for a scalable solution, something like this is definitely the way to go. So if you like the video, please subscribe, hit a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, of course, let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you in the next one.